If you have been following the ABC Networking YouTube channel, you probably saw a lot of videos around the Ruba OS CX posted by Joe Neville and Dick Van Overen. If you also have been following the news around Aruba, you maybe also have seen that there is two new platforms being announced within the CX family. One is called the 6400 and the other one is called the 6300. In this video, we're going to focus on the 6300 platform and we're even going to show you one as we have here in front of us. But the 6300 is not just one type of switch as you see here in front of us, but it's 11 new different types. Four of them are fixed, like this one. The other seven are modular switches. The depth of the fixed switches, like this one, is 13 inch. The depth of the modular switches is 15 inch. The performance of all the switches is the same. It's 880 gigabits per second bidirectional. This means 440 ingress and 440 gigabits per second egress. So I think more than enough performance for high-end access, aggregation for enterprises, and core for small medium businesses. All switches support 4K VLANs. And another very important thing, which is pretty unique in the industry, I think, for this type of access switches, is they support VSF stacking, so front brain stacking, up to 10 switches, where you can mix, fix, and modular switches which I think is really, really cool because it gives you the best different flexibility in what you want to have in your access. And with the stacking, you have reliability, you have performance, and you have the flexibility. So I think that is really nice. They support 32K, so 32,000 MAC addresses, 32,000 ARP, so IP version 4 addresses, but also 32K ND tables, so IP version 6 addresses. So not only IP version 4, but full ready also for IP version 6. So the airflow of these switches is from the front to the back, which is the most required into every organization. From a layer 3 segmentation, they support VRF. And what I want to do now is I want to give you a little bit more insight in this particular module, and we want to have in-depth. So you can see we have the switch here in front of us. But what is more in the box than just this particular device? There's more in the box is this is mounting brackets. And we'll show you the mounting holes um, at the side of these of this switch in a little bit of a couple of seconds. The other thing that is in here, something called this, which is unique in the industry. You can see here, it's a Bluetooth dongle. And with this Bluetooth dongle, with the phone, you can automatically find the switch and you can do one touch provisioning on this particular devices from up to a stack or to a single device. Really nice, but we will show you more in another video, in particular focusing on this particular app. Let's dive into this particular switch and let's start with the back. So let's twist it around. Let's hold it a little bit up for you. And you can see my power inlet is even with a sticker. So it's a brand new switch. The other thing you can see here is the ground and you can see three vents. These two are the system vents this one is the van from the uh, internal power supply. Let's move to the front. What's up in the front? In the front here is you have the outer band management port and you have USB type A, for example, where you can put in the Bluetooth dongle as we saw. The orange lid here is the same as you see on servers, which provides information about the serial number, the type, but also the MAC address of this particular switch, which can be convenient if you have somebody operating on this. Then you can see here four SFP56, meaning they support 50, 25, and 10 gigabits per second SFPs or DAC cables. On here, you can see some uh, LED indicators. For example, if there's PoE on, which port will be PoE on. You can see a unit LED, which can show you somebody needs to operate on that particular unit. You can see the UID. And we're here you can see tiny button where you can swap to these particular status LEDs if you are working in front of it. Next to this button is the USB type C for USB console port. You can also see here 24 ports and these, this particular port of this particular switch is one gigabit PoE class four. If you need more PoE or you need higher PoE, there's different models available in the 6300. Let's move quickly to here but you will not see a lot. Okay, that's this particular switch. The PoE budget of this particular switch is 370 watts. That's up to 24 ports, 
15.4 watt, so all ports on the switch 15.4 watt, or 12 ports, you can support up to 12 ports for 30 watt. The switch also supports always on PoE. What does it mean? If, for example, you need to do a firmware upgrade of this particular switch and you need to reboot it, and you have multiple access points or multiple other PoE devices, for example, like the Internet of Things, then the PoE will stay on the port, means that all these devices don't need to reboot also, which will speed up your infrastructure. The other thing this switch also supports is quick PoE. Quick PoE means if the switch is completely powered off, so let's we, we pull off the power and we pull the power back in, then immediately on this particular port we'll start to provide PoE to the power devices on the end of the cable so that they can also start up their boot process. That's it. Have a look on the website on multiple switches. We will try to make more videos about different types of models. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or send us an email. If you like the video, do a thumbs up and I hope to see you in the next video.